Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. In a moment, the first in a series of special monthly segments on rural life and agriculture in Arkansas. And we'll speak with the host who helped produce its first report. Now, another first, beginning with this edition, the leading candidates for major Arkansas offices in next year's elections. Governor Hutchinson is term limited, you may know, and the race to succeed him already is taking shape. Joining us now, Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, who is seeking, of course, the Republican gubernatorial nomination. General, thanks very much for uh, being with us. You have some well, thank you. Well, you have some competition. Thank you, Steve. All... I'm sorry, we're talking over each other, and I apologize for that. It's sort of a satellite thing or a Zoom glitch. But at any rate, you have some competition. Uh, another fairly well-known name in Arkansas politics. Are you committed to this race all the way through? Absolutely. I'm committed to this race, not only through May of 2022, but most importantly, through November of 2022. Uh, we are going to have the, the resources uh, needed to win this race to get my message of making Arkansas first out to uh, the voters of Arkansas. Uh, my record of the last six and a half to seven years as the attorney general is a proven record of accomplishment fighting for our conservative values. And so whether we're talking about our Second Amendment rights, our First Amendment religious liberty rights, whether we're talking about being the most pro-life state in America, the reason why we are the most pro-life state in America is because of the work that we have accomplished in the Attorney General's office defending our pro-life statutes. We're also pushing back against Joe Biden, his out-of-control liberal left policies. I've sued President Biden already on the greenhouse gas emissions on not being able to have tax cuts because of the stimulus funds and because of the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, all of these things are important to hardworking Arkansans. Being well, famous and having a lot of money doesn't make you a leader. It makes you famous with a lot of money. What makes you a leader is a proven record of, a, of accomplishment, and that's what I have as the Attorney General for the last six and a half years. Well, the issues that you have just cited are the same. I think identical issues that uh, that Ms. Huckabee will say her name, that uh, Ms. Sanders, excuse me, Ms. Sanders is emphasizing, and she does have quite a bit of money, but she also has something else. She has an endorsement for Mr. for Mr. Trump. You've been you have aligned yourself very closely with Mr. Trump uh, uh, over the years. But does that give Ms. Sanders the edge here? I certainly supported uh, Donald Trump's policies when he was president of the United States. However, I'm running to be the governor of Arkansas. I'm not running to be the mayor of Mar-a-Lago. I'm running to be the governor of Arkansas. And I'm going to use, again, my six and a half years experience making decisions on behalf of three million Arkansans every single day, Steve. That's what this race is about. It's about being the CEO of a billions and billions of dollars industry, which is the state of Arkansas, and who can deliver results. I have a proven record of delivering results. Uh, Sarah and I have known each other for a number of years. I've worked for her dad twice. And so, yes, this is an intra-party fight, an intra-family fight, but there's a vast difference between myself and my opponent. I have been not just on the plane, I have been the pilot of the plane. And when you fly on a plane, you realize there's two important jobs. There's the pilot and the flight attendant. Who do you want landing the plane? You want the pilot landing the plane. The person who has sat and made decisions and has done that every single day for seven years. And so I'm going to have the resources necessary to win every single day I'm out traveling across the state of Arkansas, meeting with contractors, meeting with pipeliners, meeting with job creators, talking to nurses and teachers. You know, I'm not simply uh, running a race from behind a Twitter account. I'm out shaking hands, meeting people, and working on their behalf every single day. And I'm doing so uh, as a full-time attorney general in the middle of a legislative session with a very large staff and a large responsibility, being the mom to an incredible two and a half year old baby girl and the wife to a row crop farmer uh, who, you know, we know what it's like to earn a dollar. We know what it's like to uh, have to fight back against out of control policies because our livelihood depends on it. My family's livelihood depends on it. It's not just magic words for me. It's a, ma a matter of actions. Well, it's, it's been noted that Ms. Sanders' appearances thus, thus far have been largely limited to, uh, uh, to out-of-state uh, functions. You used the phrase a moment ago, hiding behind a Twitter account. Were you, uh, a reference to Ms. Sanders? 
Well, I think it's a reference to, you know, any leaders uh, right now or people who are wanting to be elected to office uh, that, yes, we want people to voice their uh, concerns and questions uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on these forms of social media. But rather than just making statements on those, I'm actually uh, leading the charge in our own state capital to push back against big tech's censorship of conservatives. I'm not simply you know, sending out a fundraising email about it, which uh, we very well may use those methods, but I'm taking action as the attorney general. I'm not simply saying that Joe Biden is a bad president and he's hurting our Kansans. I'm taking action to protect our Kansans, to protect Arkansas jobs. Like our pipeliners, when the Keystone Pipeline got canceled, their jobs got canceled. The jobs for the folks here in Wellspun got canceled. And for the rest of us, Steve, it's an increase in what we're going to pay at the pumps. It's an increase in what we're going to have to pay to buy groceries. So that's what being governor is about. Being governor is not about simply uh, using magic words. It's about having actual leadership and actual experience. And I've got a proven record as the attorney general that I'm going to use to make Arkansas First, first in education, first in tax reform, first in having new jobs and particularly manufacturing jobs and having uh, workforce development at our education uh, opportunities for young students. So that way, when they come out of high school, they can go directly into the workforce. We've got to have prison reform to make sure that people are going from prison into a, a job so they can take care of their families. We can't simply keep doing what we've been doing. We've got to do more. And the only way that we can do more is to elect someone who has a proven record of experience. And I'm the only one running for governor who has a proven record of experience of getting things done. You have described yourself in this interview and in earlier appearances or, or, or remarks as having piloted the plane for, uh, or being a pilot. Actually, it was Mr. Hutchinson, was it not, who was in the left seat and as the chief legal officer, well, I mean, it was Mr. Hutchinson who actually was responsible for executive authority. I mean, what about being attorney general specifically, general, qualifies you uh, for the chief executive's job of the state? Well, sure, Steve. And as you well know, that I am an independently elected constitutional officer. I'm the attorney general for the state of Arkansas. I was not hired by Asa Hutchinson except uh, as a voter. You know, he was one of several hundred thousand voters that voted in my election. So I make the decisions every single day as the attorney general. Uh, oftentimes I consult with my client, Governor Asa Hudson, but I make the decision of whether or not uh, we're gonna sue Barack Obama over the waters of the US rule or so-called clean power plant or the Department of Labor's overtime rule. I make the decision of whether or not we're gonna push forward to ensure that criminals were held accountable uh, and that we carried out those uh, executions, and we fought for those in court. I make the decision every single day on behalf of millions of Arkansans. So yes, I have been the pilot and in the pilot seat, perhaps not on who's going to be the Secretary of Agriculture or who's going to be the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, but I can assure you, as the Attorney General of the state of Arkansas, I make decisions every single day on behalf of millions of people. Well, uh, uh, as a Republican yourself, do you have any reason to question uh, Governor Hutchinson's uh, 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 credentials as a Republican? Mr. Trump described him just the other day as a ri Republican in name only, a rhino. Well, I think the, the term Republican in name only is uh, being overused, that we need to look at people's actions. And I know that I have taken very conservative steps uh, in my time as the Attorney General and in my entire life. And working for Republican candidates. Uh, we have finally gotten to a place in Arkansas politics where most of our elections are going to be decided at the Republican primary. And so rather than tearing one another's uh, credentials down and using a loose term such as rhino, I think that we need to look at people's actual, uh, what they have actually done and actually accomplished. Uh, I have worked uh, very closely and supported Governor Hutchison's policies, and I've worked very closely and supported President, former President Trump's policies. And I've done so as the Attorney General of Arkansas. Uh, what I'm focused on in my race for governor is not whether or not uh, we are name calling someone a, a Republican in name only, but rather whether they have the experience and whether they have a proven record. And I'm focused on uh, that as the Attorney General and hopefully as the next governor of the great state of Arkansas. But specifically, Governor Hutchinson's credentials, any question in your mind? Is he a certifiable Republican? Is he a good Republican? <laughs> I think it's actually laughable that we're having this conversation uh, because I've known Asa Hutchinson for decades. I remember when he was the chairman of the Republican Party. 
And so uh, I, I think that it is uh, laughable that we're having this conversation. I think that Governor Hutchinson's uh, decisions are his decisions, and he's made those as governor. Uh, the decision in particular uh, that is in question is one that, quite frankly, uh, the legislature quickly uh, overrode that decision. And we as a state are moving past that. I do not believe that uh, we need to be discussing whether or not our current governor, uh, his GOP credentials, because again, I've known uh, the governor's work in Republican politics for decades, and I think it speaks volumes of who he is. Uh, we have worked closely together, but again, I've supported Governor Hutchison's policies and defended his decisions when he took Planned Parenthood off the taxpayer payrolls. He asked me at the Attorney General's office to make sure that we successfully defended that, and we did. Uh, when we have taken a number of steps that were good conservative Republican policies, uh, I have worked with him on that. And again, when President Trump made good conservative policies, I defended his decisions. That's what I've done as the Attorney General. So I don't think that we need to spend time uh, name calling uh, others rhinos, uh, that that is not helpful to government and that is not helpful uh, to how we hope to be as a state of Arkansas uh, we want to have the best people that are the most qualified with the best experience leading the state of Arkansas. So I guess I'm, I gather your answer is yes, that I mean, he is uh, the governor is a good Republican. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I think I've answered that a number of times, Steve. I think uh, Asa Hutchinson has been a Republican and has uh, for decades and decades and decades and decades. Uh, there will be people now in the Republican Party who do not agree with some of his decisions, just as there are people who do not agree with Donald Trump's decisions when he was president, just as there are people who do not agree with Leslie Rutledge's decisions at times. Uh, that That's part of being a leader, is that you uh, have to withstand people questioning decisions that you make. And I have been uh, making decisions for the last six and a half years as the Attorney General and I have been uh, applauded and criticized for some of those decisions. But again, that's the difference in my race for governor is that I have sat behind the desk making decisions. I haven't simply stood behind the podium answering questions about someone else's decisions. And you have to be able to answer questions about your own decisions and know that you have made those decisions with the best information, talking to the experts, involving, including people around you that are preparing you to lead the state of Arkansas. And that's what I've done over the last six and a half years. That's the sort of people I surround myself with and that we work hard every single day on behalf of the people of Arkansas. Yeah, Governor, there's legislation moving in the General Assembly as we speak, uh, and also in at least one county that would declare the state, uh, or, or in one instance, the county, uh, reject kind of indemnify or interposing itself, its sovereignty against uh, firearms legislation that one or another public official considered uh, 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 violative of the Tenth Amendment, uh, infringing on the Tenth Amendment. Is that defensible in your estimation? Could you defend that law? Well, certainly as we review all, uh, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 bills that are moving through the legislature, we uh, look as to whether or not those bills can be upheld in court. We have conversations with legislators. I uh, Usually we are having conversations with them uh, outside of the committees because I believe that that committee time is uh, best used. Uh, sometimes we have attorneys testify as to the constitutionality, but it's best used for experts who don't have the opportunity to meet and to for legislators to hear from them. And so we're reviewing all of those uh, issues, including uh, this potential legislation right now. General, thanks very much. We're simply out of time. I wish we had more, but will you come back? Well, please? anytime, Steve. I'm always happy to do an interview with Arkansas local media. I appreciate you taking the time to cover these issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. And as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we begin a new monthly segment in Arkansas Week, one devoted to rural life and agriculture in Arkansas. It's called Good Roots. And in our first installment, a look at an innovative approach to sustainability. It's called regenerative farming. Our host this week is no stranger to Arkansas agriculture. Here's Logan Duvall. I'm Logan Duvall, and this is Good Roots. Long identified as pickle capital, Atkins, Arkansas has always been a crossroads of sorts. A city that grew up along a railroad, served as a hub for river traffic, and currently sits right off Interstate 40. 
And just on the outskirts of town, in the shadow of Petty Jean Mountain, a 10 generation family farm is paving a new way of farming. I'm standing in a soon to be planted rice field at Ralston Family Farms. You may be wondering, rice field in the spring? What is there to see? Well, I'm not here today to harvest rice, but rather talk about farming practices, specifically regenerative farming. Whether it's labeled as regenerative, sustainable, or organic, they describe farming and grazing practices that reverse climate change by rebuilding organic matter in the soil and restoring degraded soil biodiversity, resulting in both carbon drawdown and improving the water cycle. And this rich soil is just one of the many beneficial results. I'm Tim Ralston. My wife Robin and I own and operate Ralston Family Farms. We're located in the Arkansas River Valley here near Atkins. We farm about 5,800 acres. A little over half of that's dedicated to rice production. We also grow uh, soybeans and corn. And we've got a cow herd of about 120 mama cows. We practice regenerative agriculture, and this is important because it helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's gonna be there for future generations. We have two little girls and we're getting to raise them on the farm and I'm super excited about that and just the, the opportunities that they have to you know, interact with farm life and uh, riding in tractors all the time. And it's just gonna be a great learning opportunity for them. <laughs> Sustainable practices the Ralstons are using help prevent erosion and water pollution. These practices include no-till planting with equipment outfitted with tracks instead of tires to minimize rutting, using renewable surface water irrigation and precision level fields. We utilize 100% surface water and all of that water comes out of the Arkansas River. By using surface water, we're not depleting the aquifer and it allows us to take advantage of the opportunity to use that surface water. It's also a key component of the surface water is it's warmer. And so when we apply that to the crops, the crops don't have any kind of setback or anything from the, the cold water. The interesting thing about this project is when you use zero grade farming, then you do not have the water runoff, which and when you have water runoff, that erodes the soil and the nutrients, and also the nutrients that are used to grow the plants are used completely in the soil instead of eroding into the streams. So this is the epitome of conserving our resources when you use zero grade farming. Zero grade fields are designed to give the farmer more efficient control of the water levels required for rice to develop. The zero slope allows water to travel faster and the flood to be more uniform across the field, virtually eliminating the need to build levees and till saving money and burning less fossil fuel to pump water. This is the main plume coming from the Arkansas River. And right now this pump takes care of 250 acres that lays right, right down in this area. And we typically farm that in rice. And across the road here, we've got another 125 acres that is currently using three pumps, one electric and two diesels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate those three pumps and tie it into this system. Uh, this pump was put in with the uh, help of the NRCS five or six years ago, and it's capable of pumping 5,000 gallon per minute. When we pump that water into the rice field, we just hold it like kind of putting water in a bathtub, and the crop utilizes it to its full extent, and whatever water we do return at the end of the crop, it goes back to the river crystal clear. To me, I think it all starts with being profitable and being profitable over the long term. Mike Sullivan is with the USDA National Resource Conservation Services. For more than 80 years, the NRCS has worked in close partnership with farmers, ranchers, and government agencies to maintain healthy and productive working landscapes. For farmers, if they can do things with their cropping systems to build soil organic matter, making sure that you're not losing soil, but you're building the soil, helping it to be productive so that you can continue to grow crops years into the future. Where can somebody learn to apply it or get more resources? We have local conservation districts where we have staff in most every county, and it really starts with a conversation. 
And the best thing to do is work with your local conservationist and ask for a conservation plan on how you can continue to be profitable, but at the same time address all of your natural resource concerns. If you can minimize the amount of fuel you use putting a crop in, if you can minimize the trips across that field, you know, that's good business, but it just so happens that it's good for the environment as well. You learn through the years when you're farming that uh, if you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. In Atkins, Arkansas, I'm Logan Duval, and this is Good Roots. Major funding for Good Roots is provided by Arkansas Farm Bureau. Arkansas Farm Bureau, advocating the interests of Arkansas's largest industry for more than 80 years. Arkansas counts on agriculture. Agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. And look who's here. It's Logan Duvall, host of that first installment of Good Roots. Uh, you've traveled the state to meet a lot of Arkansas farmers and as your co-owner now of uh, Me and McGee Market, right? That's right. That is right. I uh, got to see a lot of farmers and a lot of different uh, methods that they use. Yeah, you've, you've got a pretty good working relationship with a lot of them. What We heard a lot, we have heard over the, over the years, a lot about sustainable agriculture. Right. You're talking here about regenerative. What's the difference? Is there a if is there a real difference between? Them? Well, one of the things about about all that is the different names. It's it, you kind of get caught up in the weeds sometimes. But regenerative, the biggest thing is about making it better. It's regenerating. So over time, we've kind of degraded the soil in a lot of ways. And with this regenerative model, we're trying to overcome that degradation. Well, you you you're losing topsoil, I suppose. Sure. Uh, topsoil, nutrients, uh, right. just the, the organic material that's in there. And so what like the Ralstons are doing is putting it back. Well, either in this form or in the whole context of regenerative farming, is, is there a movement back to more organic? Do you see a, a, a time when we can use far fewer pesticides than we are using now? Or are we, are, are we gonna have to live with pesticides? I, I do. I think that there's there's probably going to be a happy medium and a transition period for sure. But we, the regenerative movement's a whole lot like how are our great grandparents farming? How are they doing things? They were rotating cattle. They were planting cover crops. They were doing things more naturally and not using it maybe more as a biology class than a chemistry class. Uh, in the sense, well, I mean, crop rotation though is as old as a fish helping to grow corn, right? I mean, well, right, right. A lot of this is not new. It, well, I mean, did not. we give up this? Or did, did we move away from that, that pattern? We did, we moved away from it. Uh, around the time of World War II, uh, so we went into a much more of a, you know, the factories were going into the petroleum-based chemicals and stuff, and so we started having a overabundance of that and an access, and that was a, a outlet that people used, was using the fertilizers and stuff made from those factories. How applicable, now uh, this particular farm was, was drawing a lot of water, if not most of its water, mm -hmm. from the Arkansas River, and subsequently, according to, to your piece, returning it to the river. Right. Is that concept applicable, say, in the Grand Prairie? It, it can, I mean, so different climates are conducive to different types of vegetation. Right, so some are going to need a lot less water than say rice, because rice you've got to have a ton of Water it. intensive. Right, it's very, very water intensive. Whereas another is not. When you get into the, let's say wheat or another uh, grass type, when you have a regenerative practice and you've built that soil, it's a lot more tolerant to drought and even flooding. So when you have that increase of soil organic material, think of it like a sponge, like a kitchen sponge. The water hits that soil and it just soaks in there and it stays until you squeeze it out. Right. Or, okay, now take the same, same sponge and put a real hard layer of something on there, like even say some clay, clay or, something. Yeah. Well now it's gonna hit, and it's not gonna soak in there, it's gonna run off. Well that's the problem, that's what we're trying to get away from, is we want to create the best sponge possible. So when you have a lot of rain, it infiltrates down in there, it stays in the soil. Then when you have a period of drought, it's still in the soil because that organic sponge is holding it. Fascinating stuff.
Thank you, and a fascinating <laughs> report. Uh, Good Roots, second Tuesday of our second week of every month here on Arkansas Week. Logan, thanks very thanks, much. Thanks, Steve. And we'll see you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. The Arkansas Times and KUAR-FM 89.